we know 100% about him, and apparently we are trusted by him, uh, by Nine. We don't know what his age is, we're not sure what his nationality is, but uh, we think it's American. Occupation? Dry cleaner? Hmm. <clears throat> well, let's find out about Stephen Heck. Heck seems to know everything there is to know about what's going on in Taipei. And if he doesn't directly, he often knows someone who does. It has been suggested that Heck knows about the underground because he often sells info or blackmails criminals to fund his covert ops. The goals of which are only known to him. He claims to be a member of a top secret branch of the CIA with total operational discretion and oversight. The precise nature of his operations and the sphere of his influence remain unknown. Affiliates remain unknown. Along with his enigmatic objectives, Heck employs a self-devised method of combat which he describes as Liquid Terror. A lightning fast series of darts and dashes that he uses to accurately kill or cripple multiple opponents with his hands a pair of sharp objects, and sometimes a silenced pistol. Since very few people have actually witnessed Heck's incredible ability and lived to tell the tale, many chalk this technique up to Heck's own hype and disinformation. Nevertheless, dates when Heck claims to have been engaged in operational activity coincide with reports of unusual causes of death at the Taipei Morgue, including a man with known triad affiliations, found with the chases of a 10-speed mountain bike driven through his torso, and a Vatican intelligence agent with his airway obstructed by 17 communion wafers. Wow, heck is a crazy bastard. Secret fact. Heck does not seem to be affiliated with any professional intelligence organizations, and has never been linked officially to any CIA operations. He could be categorized as a freelance operative, but then he is said to trade his services for favors, not cash. There is no question as to his broad knowledge of Taipei, and he is definitely familiar with the more infamous personalities of the city, and they him, but even close scrutiny of his behavior leads or uh, yields no certain agenda. His cool-headed conduct and manner of casual speech would define him as either one of the world's most collected, ingenious agents, or as a complete lunatic that has tricked himself into believing this. I'm gonna go with lunatic. And we're back to Restridge, so we have finished looking at them. Now we can uh, check out the factions instead of the individuals. So let's see here, we've got a 100% complete dossier on Alpha Protocol. Origin, United States, found it unknown. Organization, Covert Government Organization. Alpha Protocol is both the name of a government organization and also the term used by agents that classify them as rogue agents to outside intelligence agencies. Agents that have gone Alpha Protocol are considered acting alone or are traitors, so if their operation is discovered or goes awry, no blame will fall upon the United States. Not many within the government are aware of Alpha Protocols exists, or aware that Alpha Protocol exists, and this separation from the majority of Washington, uh, of Washington bureaucracy and oversight is intended to protect the United States from accountability for Alpha Protocol's rogue operations. The Alpha Protocol insignia has some interesting symbolism based on its description in the records. The ring of stars and arrows represents patriotism and military might. The eagle's talon is strength. The serpent is either 
its enemies pursued or stealth and subterfuge. The, and the loose translation of the Latin phrase beneath it is where no one can follow. Alpha Protocol field agents are often responsible for something that's been nicknamed the Yellow Brick Road. While the agency will provide agents with fund or, uh, funds and tech needed for their assignment, agents are encouraged to build their own pool of funds and resources, obstinably so that the source of funds cannot be traced back to the agency. According to records, this means that since Alpha Protocol's inception, almost every field agent has had to set up private safe houses, accounts, and armories for their own use. Yet none of these can be directly assessed by the Alpha Protocol agency itself. Records indicate one of Sean Darcy's operations in Burma by the name of Red Lantern required him to Yellow Big Road on the mission. And his funds are still located in untouched accounts. According to briefings, the funds from the operation were intended as bribes, but never used. <clears throat> they remain there or they've remained there ever since, accumulating interest. And it's a simple matter to redirect the interest payments to current missions. Westridge himself has yellow brick roaded operations as well. According to reports, he has had a long-standing grudge against a former KGB agent by the name of Alexei Dravik. Dravik had murdered many agents and ruined countless operations, enough to earn him the nickname Red Baron of modern espionage. Westridge has a number of ops under his belt. One is an operation called Running Gun Blues in Colombia in the 1980s. A drug dealer, Marco Mahija, or uh, Mahia, that was completely bad, bad pronunciation, whatever, <clears throat> decided to move into the military supply business, moving equipment to groups unfriendly to American interests. Westridge went undercover to gain his trust, but things didn't go smoothly. Westridge cites overzealous DEA agents in the files. The information in Westridge's file is correct. If Elf Protocol is uncovered, and it has been several times in a chain that looks like it dates back to the early 1950s, the program is erased and begins anew under a different name and a different code for rogue agents. Previous names of the agency include G-19 and Deus Volt. Interesting, so it sounds like G-22 could technically be an offshoot of Alpha Protocol. Secret Fact The staff for the Black Ops programs have an equally colorful history. One of the founders of the agency was involved in authoring Operation Northwoods a plan in 1962 to start a war with Cuba, one of the key steps in the plan making it look like the Cubans shot down a passenger plane, when it was, in fact, CIA operatives doing it all along in framing the Cubans. Fortunately for the free world, this little plan didn't happen, but it's the means by which Alpha Protocol makes the world a safer place for the United States. Hmm. And that plane was shot down at the beginning of this. Ooh, it's all tying together. Al Samad. Apparently, we have 100% dossier completion on them. Origin is the Middle East. Precise country is unknown. Founded in er, uh, 1989, they think. The exact date is unknown. Organization classified terrorists by the U.S., Canada, and the E. Or, uh, the EU, Australia, Israel, and Japan. A terrorist organization that arose in the late 1980s, Al Samad's operations have spread from the Middle East to cells throughout major European and North American cities. 
Though small in scale, Al Samad holds strong to its militant and extremist views, and has shown itself intent on expansion and recruitment, seeking any means necessary to achieve its goals. Their figurehead and chief financier is the Sheikh Ali Sahid, who has claimed responsibility for shooting down a civilian airliner in the Middle East with a prototype missile manufactured by Halbeck. Al Samad's soldiers are loyal but not generally well trained. Elite agents amongst the ranks of the organization, usually identified by red ski masks, have better training and weapons than the usual rank and file. Al Samad's danger lies in their numbers and their quick response time in calling out alarms and alerting the rest of their cells of any intruders. They are usually armed with dated assault rifles. Al Samad has recently purchased several state of the art security systems for use in protecting their base of operations. An agent infiltrating their base uh, bases may want to stock up on EMP devices or other counter surveillance gear if they wish to remain undetected. Russian Mafia. 100%. This is uh, Branko's Outsiders. Origin is Russia. Not sure when it was founded. Uh, criminal Organization is the organization. Organized crime has a foothold in almost every corner of the world, and Russia is no different. I heard that they have a lot of uh, organizations out in Russia that uh, are bigger than most corporations around the world, and... Um, basically create viruses to make money which is kind of interesting and I'm sure there's other organizations around the world but that's why it's so hard to fight all these uh, viruses that come through on the internet is because they're basically organized like actual corporations anyway enough of the side story let's get on with it in the wake of the collapse of the Soviet Union However, the Russian Mafia bolstered its ranks with corrupt intelligence agents and soldiers from the Afghan and Chechen wars, making them even more dangerous. The most prominent and possibly the most powerful gang working within Moscow is known as the Outsiders, and they sport track suits and carry submachine guns or shotguns, fearlessly charging into battle. They rely on numbers and drug-induced courage to flood opponents with bullets and bodies until they've won. Many Russian hutmen are brawlers, and while not martial artists, many have street fighting skills they've honed over many years. They can make a lot of punishment, or they can take a lot of punishment. They're used to taking and receiving kicks to the head in their line of work, and they give it right back. 